Hello and welcome to Belmore, where two teams are currently fighting off for some very important ladder positions. It is the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs taking on the Canberra Raiders in this blockbuster Monday night clash. I'm your Commissioner Will K, joined in the commentary box by the one and only maestro of analysis, Luke Driscoll, in what is going to be a formidable match. Yep, thank you, Will. I think this game is a really touch and go for both teams. Um, obviously, the Canberra Raiders have a chance to really snake that top four spot off uh, uh, the Roosters if they can get the win up. Um, and following up from that is uh, the Bulldogs obviously need that two points to catch the Storm. Yeah, absolutely. And it is still a race for the minor premiership at the moment. Storm currently up by two points. And I don't think they played till Wednesday. So it will be interesting to see if the Bulldogs pull this off, how it will affect uh, that race for number one. It's going to be Luke Thompson fielding the first one as Tim James. Switching to the prop position this week, what do you think of that one? Interesting change. Uh, obviously, things haven't gone Canberra's way in recent weeks, so you'd think that maybe they needed to spice things up. Uh, is Tim James the answer at prop? Uh, we'll... we'll we're going to find out as we've seen her drop the ball there and Bulldogs get an attack and set. And guess who it was? No other than Tim James in the way and causing an error. Now Wally Allen just getting out of hot water. Katera Maxwell going to go for a line break early, but Allen switch into that right second row early on, just making the difference and getting off, off the hook. They'll have the ball once more here. It's Berkeley. That's also an interesting change as well, having Wally Allen swap because obviously he will get less ball. So, obviously, the Raiders have relied on Wally Allen's um, go forward from the left second row. So, it'll be interesting to see what effect he has on this game from the right hand side. Yeah, absolutely. As O'Neill now goes to Eli Barnes, breaks a tackle. Barnes, he's going to be dangerous tonight and his first match at Belmore. As he'll play the ball, fifth and last. They've made their way down the field. As Luke Thompson now, he's just going to run it on the last. He saw Daniel Hellier and his eyes lit up. Luckily, Wallace was there to tackle him. All in all, that was a really good set, though, for the Raiders. They get to, So they get the opportunity to pin the Bulldogs back into their own end. And what we've seen so far from SRL teams this year, if you can stop line breaks, have we seen my other take a line break, is if you can pin them back into their 40s, you, get, you win that game of field position. That is very true. No, no, no. Walk down there. Hell yeah. Goes to Moana, spreads it out to Maxwell. That's tackle four, hands off. The fourth tackle, just getting to the 50 meter mark now. The Raiders holding their own at the moment. It's Pete Vredo, another swap into the 13. I would have put Jordan Lewis there personally. How, what do you think of that move? Oh, we've seen Vredo in 13 before, and I, I don't think he does an awful job at it. So, um, yeah, Lewis obviously would have been my first choice, but obviously there's a reason behind this. Um, and I know Moana would have definitely uh, looked at this before the match and decided that Veretta would be the better choice. Uh, Lewis would have looked at this. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good run from Morrison, backed up there by Slugger. And the back's just getting him down the field. As they go to Veretta, gets an offload. Back to Tim James. Good run there. And great ball from Jack O'Neill, who's back in the six. As they go right now. Thompson back in seven. Barnes for the line. Hell yeah, makes a great tackle there. And TTM joins him. Referee will have a look good, at this. Good goal line defense there from the Bulldogs. Um, it looks like he's been turned over, and that's what the video certainly suggests. Um, Canberra's are definitely throwing all they can to get these first points on the board. And they want them. That's only the fourth tackle. Lewis straightens up Lewis. He's going to try and push. Oh, he's going to push over. And I think Tatiara Maxwell's been beaten here. If that's not the commentator's curse, I don't know what is. I've just said the Bulldogs' goal line defense was good. And then Lewis barges over to score. Well, it took a bit of fight to get there. But the captain is the first one to score. Is the green lights here at Belmore. And the Raiders on the, bur on the board early. The Canterbury Banks down Bulldogs will be down by six when Luke Thompson kicks this. And From right wow. in front, you'd think he'd settle this straight over the middle of the post. Oh, it'd have to be. He's no Jack Carl or Sonny Tyre. 
Thompson slots that one. 6-0, six, six minutes into the match. The Raiders take the lead early. Do you think that's the opening camber needed? That will give him a whole lot of confidence, I think, uh, for sure. Butler tees up this kick once more. And the Bulldogs. It really was just that first, well, I guess the second set technically from the from the Raiders that set them up well. The Bulldogs need to make sure they can't go through the line as easy and make those easy meters. Because it really was just that setup of that uh, first set that Wally Allen gifted them. Yeah, and the Bulldogs, in the recent, uh, as we see Kowal just take a quick line break, getting close to the 50 meter mark. The Bulldogs um, at the start of the season really did jump out and they looked to be firm favourites to win the minor premiership. But certainly their wins and, and their losses more recently, they've been a more shakier team. Yeah, I mean, they had a tough match last week um, and they just couldn't quite pull it off against the Rabbitohs, I think it was, yes. Um, but they are a very, very solid team and they've had their off weeks. Uh, and that's all right, you can have your off weeks. Um, but it, at the end of the day, I think they've only lost, what, three matches uh, in, in, in round 11? So I'm not too concerned about the strength of the team. No one's ever going to go on a, on a manly win streak ever again, I don't think. Apart from the Storm, of course. Um, there's 20 matches insane. And I think because we, we had that kind of view, that's what we thought dominance was. But Bulldogs, they are definitely dominant, even with their losses. Oh, 100%. Um especially if you were to look at um they're, they're safe in the four they're, they're not dropping down and neither are the titans uh, it's only the roosters that are currently sitting in fourth spot that could drop down places but their lowest spot would probably be around ninth if they lost both their games and depending on uh, the remaining matches for other teams Absolutely. Oh, it's Riley Flynn now away to Terra Maxwell's gone but Hellier's going to chase him down he gets to the 30 the Raiders they love Riley Flynn, don't they? He was great two weeks ago with a double. As Tim James now pushing forward. Brought down by Kobe Johnston. The two eights colliding. They go right. Luke Thompson just takes a run out. It's going to be brought down by Rariri Kamene. As Nalfredo spreads the ball to Allen. Allen's going to drive. Allen's going to push. Allen will score. And I think the Raiders have gone in once more here at Belmore. There you go, Luke. More commentators curse happening to me. How's he going to work if at 12? And he certainly just proved it just then. I thought Wally Allen would be a good player at 12. And I mean, he's proven me right so far. I really rate him as a player and a bloke. Top bloke for the Blues. Mm, yeah, arguably, the, probably one of their best players this season um, for the Canberra Raiders. I'll be um, one of the best second rowers this season. The, yes, that's right. Um, yeah. Certainly the most consistent for, for the Raiders, I would say, um, in terms of output and uh, energy. Yeah, absolutely. The, he puts 100% in every, every week and, you know, not every, you know, there's going to be times that most players, they won't have a great game. I mean, there's probably every single player in this park, apart from Allen, probably has had a pretty shocking game uh, this season, but he really has had nothing but good games, I think. From what I've seen. Yeah, and you brought up the Blues games and certainly instrumental in the Blues taking that win this season. So, um, you know, well deserved to earn that spot on the Blues team as well. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a great, uh, it's a good, good to see him out at 12 and still doing stuff like that. And I think this second row pairing of Rahul Kaval back in his, like, in his natural position and uh, Wally Allen on the other side, it's going to be quite dangerous if they use it going into finals and Frodo he really is a good lock as now it's gonna be Eli Barnes through the line that's the fourth he's gonna break a tackle brought down by Tatira Maxwell with an ankle tap fifth and last now they'll probably go for a punt and just put a bit of pressure on the wingers here it's gonna be John by my oh in the in goal and he's gonna go out to the 20 for a tap Eli Barnes a lot of what the Raiders go through is on the back of some fantastic Elines Barnes attack, attacking plays, and you've got to commend him because he does that week in, week out. Yeah, hundred percent, he does. He is just a weapon, Eli Barnes. Columbus with a run there. Now it's going to go Hellier spreads it to Wallace, gives it to Lillard. He's going to drive past that fifty. 
They go right now. Butler, Hodgson. Get it. Great start to the season, Cameron Hodgson at 12, and it's just kind of wavered in form since that first about five or so games. He's going to make his mark here at home once more. Now Helio goes to Moana, puts a kick over the top. It's going to go to Riley Flynn again. They've got to be careful here. Riley Flynn, he's on the outside of Maxwell. He's going to go for a run now. No one's around him. It's one on one with Maxwell. O'Neill's coming across to give him a, some assistance. Oh, Maxwell dives! Oh. And Flynn will score the third try, 15 minutes in. And the Raiders are going on double time at the moment. That was just fantastic. Uh, that that He turned him inside out. Um, obviously, with Maxwell doing a Superman didn't help, uh, missing the tackle there. But Canberra's just in total control of this game. I don't know how the Bulldogs are going to turn this around. I don't know. And the Raiders, they know how important this match is. And it's, it's come apparent, hasn't it, tonight? They have... So far, shown up. It's early, only early days, as Chris Lord would say. It truly is. It's only 15 minutes in. They're already up three tries, all converted. It's going to be a I tough I think it's who score. needs it more. It's who needs really, it more? Yeah. Canberra, Canberra are teetering on a knife's edge in that top eight, um, despite being in fifth spot. Um, certainly, if they can win this, they, they certainly put themselves in good stead to stay in the eight. Um, where Canterbury are safe. They are safe, so maybe it's maybe what we're seeing right now is just who who wants these two points more. Yeah, hundred percent. Tim James. Run, release. Just with the run there, he's been pretty good at eight. I'm thoroughly impressed at the moment with Tim James. As now it's going to be Vredo through the line, fending off one. Good run from Pete. As they go left, Caval. Yeah, apart apart from that early knock on from from Raiders, which involved uh, Tim James. It has been really good from him so far. Um, interested to see what he what he can do at the back end um, of the, the half, once, like the how Canberra go at the back end once their substitutes come on. Yeah, it will be interesting, but they have got some quality players off the bench. And, you know, I quite like Michael Corte in a forward role. Um, he's a, I think he's a hooker primary from Remory. My arm almost getting away. Um, but he, he played a lot of lock in the mines for the Blue Tongues, and he was a very solid forward. So it's good to see us. Lillard now through the line. He's playing second row today. Moana. The Bulldogs get the busted. opportunity to get to the Raiders' end and mount their own attack now. Oh, when they've thrown them. More commentary curse. I think Moana's <laughs> yeah. going to have Moana's going to have words with you, mate. He's going to have words. As, uh, Don't say anything. <laughs> Mine spreads it to <laughs> Flynn. Couldn't get past Mene that time and Moana. In essence, the Bulldogs are actually being their own worst enemies and they're, they're creating a lot of mistakes and a lot of giveaways to the Raiders and that's oh, what it's reflecting. As an intercept goes the way of the Bulldogs. <laughs> the commentary curse is strong with Luke Driscoll. <laughs> Can you just quickly say that Melbourne Storm aren't going to win the minor premiership? <laughs> um, no, Melbourne are going to win by comfortably by 30 no. points this week. No. It's Columbus. <laughs> it's brought down. They go left. Butler gives it to Lillard. How good has Charlie Butler been in this stage of the season? He has been incredible. You know, really yeah. good halfback. Probably the form halfback of the competition. I think there's a, a there's a handful of halfbacks you could say that for, um, and it's it's really surprising that. that a lot of those main Oh, his Goats runs oh. onto it! Goat scores! Sorry to cut you off, I didn't see that one coming. Morrison letting the ball bounce. He thought it was going to go into touch, but Goats. That was incredible from him. Doing his best David Mead impression and scores the try for the Bulldogs. Getting him on the board for the first time tonight. Yeah, Canberra being caught lacking in. Uh retrieving that ball and the Bulldogs certainly pounced and Corey Goats, Jesus. Um, that ball could not have bounced perfectly into his arms, really could it? Uh, that was fantastic. That was incredible from Corey Goats. You know, it's a, it, they're a team known for their incredible plays and there you go, the Bulldogs on the board now for the first time tonight. Still down by 12, but 
Yeah, that, that was a beautiful Will Warbrick play from Jacob Morrison, just letting the ball bounce in a try. <laughs> See how the team's way. Like, that could be the try of the round. Um, that was certainly something. Uh, it certainly came out of nowhere. It didn't look like the Bulldogs certainly had any chances with that kick. So, congratulations to Corey Goats on getting that try. You know, well, <laughs> the first game, we'll see. If something tops that, though, I'll be very uh, both impressed and over overjoyed. Uh, there's a penalty given away, and now the Raiders. Is this the curse happening again? I said, how are Raiders going to go once they're once they make their inner changes, and now the Bulldogs certainly seem to be in control. I'm sure it's okay. And I, was, I was wrong. I said Corte. Sorry, Corte's coming off the 17. James Black and Ruben Mobs are on the bench tonight uh, in, this, in this period. And Ruben Mobs, I haven't really seen anything impressive from him in, in the front row, I have to be honest. Uh, maybe, maybe I've missed something. I'm sure I have. But he really hasn't been anything incredible in the forwards. As now it's going to be Daniel Hellier slicing through the middle. Goes to Wallace. He'll be brought down by Luke Thompson as now the Bulldogs ready to ball play. Moana. He'll be acting half. They go left. It's going to go just to Filippo Gould. One out and Vredo's going to have to bring him down by himself. Fifth and last now. Can the Bulldogs go back-to-back -back tries? They go right. It's going to be Moana. Drops the ball. Now Vredo's away with it. And that will be zero. That was tough then. Uh... Raiders certainly had their back against the wall and it looked like the Bulldogs had their, a great opportunity to put points on the board. Um, shame that the kick didn't come off. No, it is a shame. Oh, there's a pass just goes into touch there. O'Neill not finding the mark. The touch, judge. And the Bulldogs will have another opportunity here. Oh, Goats picked that up. He was gone. Oh, that would have been two great tries. How do you pick from if that happened? <laughs> How would you pick the try of the week if Goats had picked that one up? I don't know. It was Wallace. <laughs> He'll play the ball. They go left. Butler. Now goes to Moana. Oh, he looked to dummy, but Wally Allen was ready for him. A brick wall in defence. They go left. Lillard out to the wing. Mayava scores! Flynn can't hold him out. And John Boy Mayava will score the second try as both wingers go in here at Belmore. Are we seeing the lack of Raiders depth in the in the in the middle of the field being exposed here? I don't know if I could say that considering it's the wings that have scored. Yeah, but the go forward for the Bulldogs, they certainly um, they certainly create the space for the outside backs. Oh they are. They absolutely are. And I think it was Lillard actually doing that last pass. Out to my other is Butler. Swings. Swings. Oh, just fading away to the right. And they'll be down eight points here. Bit of a sigh of relief from the Raiders as now the Bulldogs have to score twice to get in the lead. Certainly a long way to go, though. Um, oh, yes. oh, yes. You're going to need the Raiders to, to hold on. And that lead is shrinking very quickly uh, in the space of, what, seven minutes? Not oh, even five. Five close. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's, uh, it's become intense and very heated at the moment, isn't it? This is Tedesco taking that first run. They had some good bench forwards, don't they? Filippo Gould and Jack Tedesco. Some very solid bench forwards. And then they got Favali and Gawa and Corey Boyd in the backs on the bench. They got two outside backs that they carry. It's a, it's a very different bench composition to what a lot of clubs run. Oh, there's a forward pass from Hell yeah. And he's pulled the Tim James special. What have I said about the Bulldogs that um, caused this to happen? <laughs> Nothing. I think that was all hell yeah, that one. As now as Eli Barnes slicing through the middle. Gets an offload to Thompson, who's met well by Damien Mawana. Great cover defense. As now, Thompson plays the ball. Berkeley, Vredo, now to Black. He'll play the ball. About seven out. They go left. O'Neill gives it. Oh, it's off the head of someone, but Barnes picks it up. Morrison now. That's the fourth. The Raiders. Throwing everything they have at the line at the moment. Now it's Black. Sorry, Reddo. Reddo's going to push. Okay. Reddo will push, but he'll turn on his back. As fifth and last now from the Raiders. Where will they go? Will they have time to set up a play? They're going to go. O'Neill puts a bomb kick out. It's very shallow, though. Slugger's going to be underneath it. Columbus takes it nicely. 
And five out from their own line is where the Bulldogs will start their set. Great defense from Canterbury. So they're pegged back now, so if they can just stop them from taking a line break, they can certainly get the ball back in great field position with the Raiders, but they've just got to stop. Uh, I think recently, for, for most of their sets, it's been Mayava that's, or Lillard that's got the line break, so you've got to watch for them too. Yeah, it has been, and Mayava back on the wing. Good shout, I reckon. He, he was okay at second row, but it wasn't quite working the way they wanted it to, and he really has been, uh, been a good winger. This, this season when he's been there, so good call. Moana puts it down to Flynn, the danger man. Steps one, Riley Flynn now. He wants to make a fool of Tatera Maxwell again, but Filippo Gould gets to him before he can. That's a good set of six from the uh, in defense for the Raiders. That, that was really good. They See, they've got the ball on the second, just past the 50 meter line. Um, they pegged the Bulldogs back, and so they'll get their opportunity this set of six, you'd imagine. They should do if they get another good run or two. They're going to go. O'Neill gives it to Black. Look at some good post contact meters as he's wrestled to the ground by Lillard and Gould. Black's they actually had a good stint on the field. Yes, as now it's Caval's turn for the line. He's going to go back inside to Freddo. Hell yeah, is waiting for him. As Berkeley is going to have the decision. Where does he go in the fifth and last? He goes out right. It's going to be O'Neill. Puts a high kick up. Mayava's underneath it, but who's coming across? It's no, it's going to be Mayava. No one takes him. And Barnes will bring him down, one on one. Raiders have started their game plan, kick it to the corners and try to peg the Bulldogs back and hopefully just win that battle of field position. And I think that's what they need to do when they're getting a bit tired in the middle. And they're getting a bit fatigued. They just need to put it to the wings and trap them in the corners. Um, and, and it worked the last set, may as well do it again. And if they can get a tap back and score, all the all the better, you know? So it's a good strategy. It's now Gould now. Straight to the, la the line. Ugh. It's Wallace. Brought down by Fredo and Black. It was a nice driving tackle. Nice slow play the ball. This is Moana kicks it once more down to Riley Flynn. They're loving that Riley Flynn as an option at the moment. It's Riley Flynn again. Maxwell is really struggling to keep up at the moment. He almost got turned inside out once more. There was a lot of damage limitation there. He didn't make as many metres off previous returns from kicks. So take that uh, as we see the Barnes breaking through. So we're going to see another attacking set potentially from the Raiders here. We probably will as Caval now straight to the line. Rahul Caval can't get an offload, but they're 15 out now. That's only the fourth. They've got two more tackles here as Caval goes right. Berkeley mobs. Now to Black. Berkeley will go right. It's going to be Luke Thompson with the kicking duties. They put it in the corner again. This time it's Kamene underneath it. This time it's Flynn underneath it. But he can't get his feet on the ground quick enough. And it'll be a handover in the corner. Oh, we're seeing the same again. Uh, pegged it back into the corner. So they've just got to hold up and muscle up in defense and stop the Bulldogs from getting line breaks. Um, they might even be able to secure the lead at half time and certainly come out in the second half and hopefully turn it around. Yeah, as Hodgson plays the ball, now they go. Ruben Mobs turning the tackle there by Berkeley. As you know, the, bin, the big guns couldn't come on soon enough, I don't think, for the, mm. for the Raiders. They haven't scored a single point since Tim James and Jordan Lewis have come off the field as Moana kicks it deep. And it's going to go all the way down to Barnes. On the kick return, Eli Barnes now. One on one. Who's going to win this one? Oh no, it's an ankle tap from behind from Kamene. And that's great from the rookie center. Oh, and too long in the tackle. And gives a penalty away. It's almost close to professional foul. You would think um, after coming off on a break and being held in the tackle. Um, very lucky to stay on the field. Yeah, I'd actually... I was half expecting it to be a sin bit. Um, so that is quite... Quite lucky. Fantastic right. cover defence the Bulldogs have shown so far on. Uh, apart from that try earlier in the stint, um, they've actually covered really well uh, for that fullback, for the Bulldogs fullback if, if he's not there. They have as Luke Thompson. He'll play the ball. They go left now. It's going to be O'Neill. Goes to a cool ball. As the big guns back on the field, it looks like. Thompson, he'll push forward here. Fifth and last, five minutes out. 
Can they score one final try here, the Raiders? They're going to go left. O'Neill puts it to the same corner they've been putting it all night. This time it's a tap back. Eli Barnes for the line. Barnes, no, he's going to be caught. And turn on his back. Great stuff there from the Bulldogs. And desperate defence. That is good. So this will probably be the last set of six in the half. Um, ranking the Raiders' efforts, their, their defence has been really great. Um, or their whole team's been really great at pegging the Bulldogs back for this last 15 minutes of the half. And I'm hoping that they can t continue that domination of field position um, and they probably get the win over the Bulldogs as we see Johnson getting on a, on a break and that'll be half time. We'll see you very shortly. 18-10 is the score. Raiders up at half time. Welcome back to SRL TV, where the Canberra Raiders are currently leading the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs 18 to 10 away from home. That first half, some great individual efforts. Riley Flynn clocking up over 200 meters. Uh, Eli Buns 161, and Rahul Kaval 126. Uh, some big run meters from the Raiders as they were absolutely decimating everywhere in the field and an interesting statistic as we love looking at our fullbacks to Tiara Maxwell 15 run meters from three runs 12 tackles in that first half it's a bit of a contrast between him and Eli Barnes at the moment isn't it Driscoll definitely is um but he hasn't got the ball um the Raiders have been very uh, uh strategically minded and taking it kicking it to the corners to the wingers of the Bulldogs rather than kicking it to Maxwell and I think that's their play they don't want him to have the ball yeah, and I think that's probably the right play as well. He's a danger man. and But even if he had the ball, I think he'd be very tired. Like I said, 12 tackles at half time for a fullback is an extremely high number. Uh, and the only person... The Raiders' top tackler had 14. Uh, that was Pete Fredo at halftime, sorry, missed. Uh, and the top tackler for the Bulldogs was actually Thomas Wallace. 22-0 missed at half time. But he's gunning, if you can... Duplicate that in the uh, second half. He's gunning for that uh, for that record. I think the Bulldogs are actually lucky that the score is as close as it is. Um, I'd, I'd rather than a brief ten minutes or eight minutes or so, where they certainly put the points on. Uh, Canberra's just been in control of that whole first half, um, and Canberra's lucky not to have scored more points, or unlucky not to have scored more points. There's Preston Beads with a good run now. It's fifth tackle. Tim James back at hooker in this second half. As they go, Michael Corte puts a high kick up. He must be playing lock. Who's underneath it? Who's there? It's going to be Vivali and Gawa. And he'll bring down the ball with uh, great confidence. And, and they get the, the seven tackles set, set too. So hopefully get, get out um, of their own end this set of six. Oh, and they've given it. I'm yeah. just not talking. I'm not, I'm not saying anything now. There's going to be words had. There's going to be a speaking to <laughs> from Damian Milano at full time, I think. As Luke Thompson. Find the ball. 15 out. They go left. Redo now goes to Beats. Driven back there. They go left. Caval. Good tackle on him. Took three of them to take him down. As they go right, it's going to be Jack O'Neill. Inside ball. Luke Thompson. He's going to be flipped on his back. That'll be the fifth and last. His last tackle like option. Whenever I say something good or something that could happen for the Bulldogs, something bad happens. So Absolutely. I'm just going to try and refrain from saying something about the Bulldogs in general. Um, Fredo as we see. <laughs> getting in the way. Uh, there's something good for the Bulldogs. There you go. Kobe Johnson just taking a big runoff. The back fence there. Now it's going to be Wallace. Wallace ball. has certainly got a high workload at the moment. Um, he seems to be doing a lot of stuff at once. I uh, commend his uh, fitness at the moment. Yes, he's been like that all season, though. He's really put the big uh, efforts in his camera. And Ogden's actually swapped to the left side at half time. And John by uh, but looks like he's in second row on the right. As he'll be tackled just in the 50. Good defense from the Raiders there as they'll go to Moana. Put the kick down to, oh no, it's Riley, it's Riley Flynn again. Can he get past one? Yes, he can, but he can't get past the forwards. Every time, for Ruriri Komene is under distress. He's been stepped that many times tonight. It's getting a bit silly. 
Full credit to Flynn, though. He's um, obviously the game plan for the Bulldogs was to peg it back into that corner, but he's certainly running out of his socks at the moment. I mean, if, if you're going to say, do you want to put it towards a rookie or a gold, you'd probably put it towards the rookie every, every day of the week. But uh, Flynn's really making him pay. He's a 69-rated rookie, I believe. Or well, a 70-rated rookie now. So We certainly wouldn't want to be kicking it straight to Eli. We know how destructive he can be from the kick return as well. Exactly. It's too many teams that know that. Too many teams. They go to Columbus, now to Butler. Oh, folded there by Beats. As Butler will get up quickly to play the ball. And he's applauding his effort of a tackle. It's to Tierra Maxwell. That's the third. They make it their way to the 40 now. AC Naman is tackled. Brought down by Tim James and Pete Verreto. They go left. Damien Moana links up with Hodgson. Ruin Mobs tackling them there. As they get past the 50 this time. That's going to be the fifth. They're slowly just working their way down this field here at the moment, Luke. They're getting those big kicks in, but they need to have the better chase, and there's a good chase on Flynn. Contain him finally. That's certainly what they needed, right? Um, they get the chance to peg uh, Canberra back into their own end and they might win that, that start winning that battle of field position because it's still been all Canberra for the last 10 minutes of the second half. I can't believe it's already 10 minutes gone in the second half. It's gone like that. Tim James, they go to O'Neill, now to Beats. Canberra holding on to a eight point lead, but they haven't scored in about half an hour. Pete Vretto plays the ball. They go left now. O'Neill puts a kick down all the way. Corey Boyd fields it. Where will they go? Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Great tackle from Corte. And they've done it again. They've pegged him into the corner. They're doing it really well. Uh, you can't fault the Raiders at the moment uh, in terms of their defence coming back uh, one off the kicks, off the six, of, six and last. So. No, absolutely not. They've been consistent and doing the correct thing all night. So go Moana out to Kamene. Steps one, Rariri Kamene. Can't get the pass away. They go to Moana, puts a crossfield kick in. Goes down to Riley Flynn again. Morrison's had no chance and Flynn just goes straight through a gap but can't get away from Maxwell. I think that might be the least amount of media he's made on a kick return uh, that particular run so at least the Bulldogs were weary to that sidestep that they knew was coming yeah they, they, they're scared and that would be too as Jack O'Neill brought down by Maiava who's been covering him all this second half so far it's gonna be good because they're 299 speeds matching up that's Allen they go right Thompson Bart down the wing to Flynn is he into touch there? Ooh, he's very close. Very close. The touch judge is right there. So regardless of Jack O'Neill's best attempts, the touch judge is useful, and that is a poor kick from Tim James. Way too far. They definitely killed that set. Um, that was a, an awful kick. Um, probably shouldn't be letting Tim James kick it anymore for the rest of the game. <laughs> You wouldn't think. It's Kobe Johnston. Brought down the 40. They go right. Now it's Butler. Gives it to Wallace. Who's going to just run it up to that 50. That's the second tackle. Mayava goes to Columbus. They're getting something on now. The Bulldogs finding some fire as they go. Butler goes to Namina. They will get some great post-contact meters. The big man brought down by Tim James and Pete Fredo. They go right, Butler gives it out to Columbus, who can't step away from Michael Corte, who's been marking really well on that left edge for the Raiders. Now they go left. It's going to be Wallace, puts up a kick. It's a big high kick, Flynn's underneath it, and he will take it nicely. Tackled there, though, five metres out from his own line. Now all the Bulldogs have to do is hold them into that little area, and they can certainly get some great field position on the back of this defensive set. Yeah, absolutely. Three. Back to ten. And it looks like they're able to, so far, they're not even broken the 20 yet. It's the third tackle. Mobs now. He's held there. Four. 
That's the fourth. Ruben Mobs plays the ball. They go to Luke Thompson. Now goes to Jordan Lewis. They couldn't crack 30 this set. And that's the fifth tackle. That's great defense from the Bulldogs. And we'll wait to see what they can make of all that defensive effort. That's a good kick from Thompson to get him out of a bit of trouble. Vavali and Gawa now. The step one. Be brought down just short of that 40. It was a great defensive set from the Bulldogs. Um, and now they'll get the chance. And as we see, Maxwell taking and passes the offload off to Hellyer. And he's tackled uh, just, just short of the 40 meter line. Yeah, it was Wallace. Goes out to Moana. Playing the ball. They go left now. It's Hodgson. Goes out to Favali and Gawa down the wing. He steps to Eli Barnes. Or maybe he just slips over. We're not really sure. But he'll be brought down by Wally Allen, who's playing centre. As now they go Daniel Hellier. Fifth and last, five metres away from the line. Can the Bulldogs get it done now? They're the closest they've been for a long time. As it's going to be along the ground. Casey Namina scores! Wallace sets him up. And the Bulldogs, if Butler gets this kick, will only be down by two. 20 minutes left in the match. Seems like they've been tra uh, training for that play, and it was fantastic from Wallace to get that beautiful grubber along the line to Namina. Great kick. And just found the perfect gap for Namina to run onto it. And Butler should get this. It's virtually right in front. And he, if he does, it'll only be two down. Only a penalty goal in it. The Raiders will not want to give away a penalty anywhere near their own line or right in front in any capacity, will they? No, you're not wrong. Um, as we're seeing that, that uh, arm wrestle that, that's been created in this second half, it's starting to go in favour of the Bulldogs, and the Bulldogs certainly have their tails up, so that it's going to be hard for the, the Raiders to hold on if they keep defending the way they are. Yeah, the Bulldogs, up, it was all off that really good defensive set. It gave them ample field positioning. That's why I was saying that... Uh, the, uh, be in front by more because they were doing the exact same thing to the Bulldogs albeit with not as the same effect but with similar effect oh it was um, Hellier through the line the pass wasn't intended oh but he gets it off to Garcia I've said That's... something about the Bulldogs and they give it away so that happens it does happen indeed Two hands away. Garcia oh yes I was, I was saying Garcia shouldn't be on the field but yes he should because the subs have come on both teams now in the forwards. And I was worried that maybe there was an error at halftime. But no, we are in the clear. Caval. Brought down there in the 30. That's the I'm fourth tackle. The Raiders go, I'm hoping the Raiders go back to their basics and... Um, there you go. There's a basic pass it to Eli Barnes and you got nothing going. It's fifth and um, last now. <laughs> kick it to the corner and trap them in the corner. No, they're going to go down more the middle of the field. Can someone get up and underneath? No, it's going to be Vivali and Gawa. Very good under the high ball. And the 20 is where they'll tap it. Zero tackle. He's held there. Zero tackle. Now, I'm not going to say anything about the opportunity of the Bulldogs getting up to the other end and having a potential opportunity to attack the Raiders line. You've already got um, one captain wanting the... words, mate. You don't want another one. <laughs> Ugh. Hodgson running it. Moana goes to Maxwell. Steps one. Luke Thompson, great tackle there and cover. That's only the third though. Still a long way to go. They go. Moana now goes to Goats. They'll be brought down. Left to Lillard. Through the middle. In interesting matchup. Samuel Lillard in the middle now and Jaden Garcia in the middle. Uh, that's going to be an interesting one. <laughs> a centre versus a prop. Morrison getting a good first run. So what are you saying, Luke? Nice to see Goats back on the field after his uh, heroic effort scoring um, scoring in the first half. So um, yeah. should be interesting seeing him back there. Yeah, it's weird that they put Goats in the middle. Usually they take Pimene off 
They put Kamene back in the middle because he's got higher strength. There's now Delight Barnes. He wants to break this game open. But Tim James is going to make us see multiple things at once. That's the fourth tackle. They go left. Luke Thompson goes out to Berkeley. Fifth and last now. It's the Raiders' chance to stand up. 69 metres gain in this set. Tim James. He goes right. It's O'Neill. Puts a grubber kick in. Who's there? Angie Slugger will score. And look at how high he's throwing the ball. Do you reckon he likes that one? Angie Slugger scores to put the Raiders firmly back in the lead. That was certainly something, wasn't it, Will? Um, how quick that ball ejected from putting after he put it down. It was... Uh, oh, he's kicked it. It was something. <laughs> um, has he kicked it once he's put it down? Is yeah, that he has, yeah. yeah, yeah. With, with his left foot, I think. That's what happened. That's... That flew off like a bullet. Maybe he should be the one kicking for the Raiders. He <laughs> did. If they need a field goal, they know who to go to, I think. We'll just kick and put that along the ground and go all 100 metres. Thompson slots that one. Eight points of difference once more at Belmore. I still wouldn't rule out the Bulldogs. We've seen them earlier score two tries in five minutes. Um, God, no, I wouldn't rule it out. Mm. But certainly you'd feel a lot safer as a Canberra Raiders supporter right now. You sure would. And once again, it was Eli Barnes stepping up in that moment, making a big play. He's the Kalen Ponga of the SRL Raiders, isn't he? He really is. When something great, whenever something great happens, it's on the back of something he's done, as we see Slugger, <laughs> uh, after scoring a try, taking off and uh, making it just past the 32 metres. It's Berkeley now through the line. He's going to go for a bit of a run. Oh, gets the ball. It's Ford. That's an interesting call. To O'Neill. That did not look forward in the slightest, but that's what the touch judge or the referee has called. And the Bulldogs get off the hook because it looked like the Raiders were going to run through them. Now they go. Inside ball to Goats. 12 minutes left in the game. The Bulldogs creeping up in this try line. Moana goes out to Butler, who goes to Tierra Maxwell. Porte doing well at bench center defensively. Very solid. As they go left, hell yeah. Now goes to Lillard. Bumps off one. Samuel Lillard for the line. Gets an offload to Johnston, who's driven back there. That's the fourth Great tackle. Spring. They've got two more. The Raiders just need to hold on for two more. As Hodgson brought down short. Fifth and last. Where do they go? Where are their halves? Moana's ready. Butler's ready. They go to Moana. Moana drops the ball. Garcia's away. Jaden Garcia's away. The Hellier dies. I think Garcia will race away to score. And he will win the match for the Canberra Raiders. He will become a cult hero. Take a bow, the rookie center. Such a big frame on him too, for him to stretch away and get away from those Bulldogs players chasing him down. Excellent work. No one could get him, hell yeah. Just running out of, out of puff before he could get to him. As the Raiders will be 30 to 16. 10 minutes left, you'd have to say that seals it for them, wouldn't you? I, I would think so. Um, I, I never want to say anything uh, bad about either team, because uh, generally it swaps around and that team will probably score next. So, um, speaking of, hell yeah, he's had um, a bit of an underperformance than his usual self uh, in this game, wouldn't you say so, Will? Uh, I don't know. You, you... It's just folding a bit under pressure, isn't he? Oh, so he certainly missed a fair few tackles this game. Um, well, he missed four in the first like half. <laughs> so, and I he think that's like extended into the second. 60% of tackle efficiency. Yeah, so, and I think that's extended into the second, unfortunately, for him. Um, I'm sure next week he'll come back and be far better. Oh, no, he doesn't have to be. It's okay. He really doesn't have to be. As now it's going to be Eli Barnes. Three. You couldn't tell Luke. Melbourne's, Melbourne's playing Bulldogs next week. <laughs> no, I know, I know who's first. That's probably touted as the game of the whole season, really. Um, certainly the two front runners battling it out. As now um, it's going to go to Barnes. Sorry to cut you off. As the fifth and last year. We'll get back to that in a second. As Tim James goes right. It's going to be O'Neill. Puts a grubber kick through. Oh, Thompson's... He's met there by Cameron Hodgson. And the Raiders are looking just to put it to bed. Sorry, great pick up, great defence. Great pick up and great defense off that. Um, 
as I was saying, yeah, it's probably the game around. Certainly the two front runners that's certainly developed over the season. Obviously, we you have the Titans there, and um, should this score remain the same, the Titans will have the chance to jump in front of the Bulldogs. But that's certainly let's not take that away from the Bulldogs. They've had an outstanding first season. And so are the Titans. The Titans, they're still a bit the Rabbitohs. So you never know, really. And I don't know who your last round matchup is. Oh, that's against Manly. Manly, okay. There you go. And so both of those teams, and I, I find the race for the top eight that, that's developed as well, um, between all those teams on 10 points, and all of those teams need to win. Um, and so what we're seeing here, like, obviously, as I stated, um, Canberra really need these two points. And they, uh, these two points will probably all but confirm them into the uh, top eight based on for and against, uh, as long as they don't get smashed in their last round. Yeah, 100%. They're going to go to mobs now. He's held there. He'll be brought Three. down. Back to ten. They go left. Now goes to Caval. He will be brought down. That's the fourth tackle. They go right now. O'Neill goes right to Barnes. Now goes to Thompson. Straightens up. They're just running it at the moment. Not letting any opportunity go towards the Bulldogs as they wind down this clock. Berkeley. It's a kick down to Corey Boyd. Steps one, Corey Boyd. Boyd's going to get a bit of space, but he brought down by Garcia. And there you go. Garcia's playing really well this game, um, certainly in this back end of the second half. Uh, I would have fought for all money. He would have got a lot more metres off that run. Yeah, I thought so as well, but no, Garcia just chasing down. Angie Slugger and Garcia forming the two props at the moment. Angie Slugger and Jaden Garcia, sorry that is. And yeah, they've been, uh, well, they both scored, so <laughs> can't really complain, can you? No. It's to Tara Maxwell there. I mean, Butler on the fifth and last, putting the kick down to Riley Flynn. Flynn wants one last hurrah. He's going to get a bit of space, but Moana will bring him down. It's the Raiders. Go left now. Thompson. Straight through a gap. Luke Thompson, he's got a lot of space ahead of him. The Tierra Maxwell hasn't made his attempt to tackle yet. He's going to dive early. Thompson will score. And well, if you weren't certain before, it's all but set in stone now. The Raiders will take a 20 point lead in the last 20 minutes. Outstanding game from the Raiders. Um, certainly, the, certainly the the win they needed after the last three weeks so those changes must have worked out really well for them yeah they, they must have and at the time of recording I usually do it at the, about this stage in the game at the time of recording well, Luke and I are unhappy because we took Raiders 1-8 uh, no no one will be happy in fact because no one's taken Raiders 19 plus at the moment how about and that why would, they? why would they you know um I, find, I, I don't see a reason why you would think the Raiders would put 19-plus uh, points over the Doggies. The Doggies, as I stated, they've been strong all season. Um, blip on the radar. I think next week they'll certainly come back a lot stronger given the opponents that they're versing in Melbourne. No, they really um, don't have to. It's okay. It's okay. They don't have to. Oh, they'll step up and they'll perform. No, no, it's okay. Um, but as it states, that the, the first week of the finals might be actually decided um, this week depending on scores. They do, and, and you never know, really. I wouldn't mind facing the Raiders in round one of the finals. Um, but at the same time, Melbourne historically has a bad record in real life against the Raiders in round one of, in week one of the finals. So I guess we'll see. As it's going to be. That's the fifth and last. This will be the last time the Raiders touch the ball in what has been a monumental effort as Boyd pushes back, uh, pushed back, yeah. and one that will be play it. For a consolation oh, one more try. play. Columbus will get mm. through the line. He'll step the fullback, but he will, there's players oh. all around him. He won't get there. Nice and wow, the, the Canberra, sorry, the Canberra Raiders, coming off of the 36 to 16 victory against the Canary Banks Down Bulldogs. That is an oh, amazing feat, and they will stay in the finals. I think now they can't drop out. Probably with that for and against. Uh, yeah, no, they're safe. They're safe in the eight, I believe. Um, it would take a, an astro 
an astronomical uh, collapse um, next week if they were to lose by a lot of points. And I'm thinking like 50 for them to be able to drop out. So, all but safe. All but safe. Well, there you go. Look at some of these stats. Wow, so three tries to six. It was a lot closer for most of the match. 18 from 25 completions from the Bulldogs, 25 from 29 from the Raiders, nine versus five errors. Uh, same penalty count, very similar tackles. 30 miss tackles to 15 and 26 line breaks to 42. So you can see where the discrepancies are, can't you? You really can, and I was just thinking, I know it doesn't show you that stat, but meters gained um, certainly oh. in favor of the Raiders by a long margin. Um, just as you know, as a team total, uh, Bulldogs just they were stuck, uh, and every time they scored, it was on the back of the Raiders' uh, mistake, or with the exception of that uh, one where that set of six where they defended and kept them into their thirty. Luke Thompson getting man of the match apparently. I don't mind that at all. It's Daniel Hellier, two hundred nineteen meters, two line breaks, three errors, six missed tackles from twenty two. Jeez, that's. that's uh, um, that's something. As I said, it's not it's not a very Daniel Hellyer like performance, and um, I think next week he'll, he'll come back and be a lot better. Uh, just that's a lot of missed tackles. Yeah. Certainly not like him to miss that many tackles. No, and you're saying Wallace did a lot, 116 run meters, one line break, one try assist, 37 tackles with only one missed. He was very close to beating the record tonight. You'd only need three more tackles to do it. Oh, Wallace had an outstanding game. You can't fault Wallace. Like, no, he can't. just abs absolute uh, man of the match for the for them actually. Like if you were to say for the Bulldogs, um, yes. by far. definitely their player of the game. Easy. Yeah. And uh, Rawiri Komene absolutely terrorised by Riley Flynn. Seven missed tackles, only six made. We talk about uh, um, Mayava. He went very quiet into that second half. He did really well at the start. Uh, second half, very quiet. Yeah, not much in it there. Do look, Riley Flynn, 308 metres, eight line breaks and a try. You'd think he was playing fullback. Right? Um, what? Man of the match. By man far of the, the match. man of the match. Easy. Yeah. Or, I don't know, look at Eli Barnes. 12 line breaks, 265 run metres. Luke Thompson, 277 run metres, two line breaks and a try. I mean, you look at some of these stats here, Luke, and you think... What are they on? Like, they really stepped up tonight. They really, truly did it. Um, that's just the top of the board. Even an effort like Rahul Caval, 179 metres, four line breaks. Um, Tim James, 177. Angie Slugger, 129. Alan Berkeley, 128. Garcia, Fredo. All that is just absolutely dwarfed by those top three. And those are still massive numbers. Just pretty much half the team has gotten over 100. And uh, three players have cracked over 250. Yeah, well, uh, Angie Slugger, 60 minutes, um, big, and 129 meters. That's and 10 runs. Like that's a that's a solid output from him as well. Uh, like if you were to to do that by minutes, I think you'd find that he would be a actually up a bit higher um, in terms of uh, meters per minute. Yes, he was uh, he was good tonight, especially in in that second stint at prop, and so was Garcia doing that big runaway try, and that definitely helped his run meters. Um, but yeah, even like Michael Corte, he missed one tackle at centre for a whole second half, marking up against, uh, I think it was Corey Boyd on that edge at that time. Like, stuff like that is very impressive. He was really a brick wall on defence um, and stopped them getting those easy, easy metres. So, well done to him tonight as well. Um, and a great play. Reto played really well too. Reto um, played very well. He was consistent, so... Um, 25 tackles, zero missed. There's nothing to... Uh, and you know that. Yeah, as I was saying um, at the start of the game, we've seen him play lock and he does it fairly well and I, I've no complaints over over his output for this game as well. He was very good to that. But uh, that's all we have time for. Thank you, Luke, for joining me in the commentary box and thank you for you at home watching. Make sure you stick around because we've still got uh, the Rabbitohs taking on the Titans. That's going to be a great match in Sydney. Uh, so, mate, I've been your Commissioner Wilkay. It's been a pleasure having you tonight. Make sure you stick around for more SRL action.